And let's go ahead and get right to that breaking news out of Cabarrus County. This is where they are pinpointing now exactly where some COVID-19 patients got the virus. Reporter Mark Becker is live in Cabarrus County. Mark, this is really important, especially since the victims, they were following social distancing guidelines. And these were guidelines that we were hearing about earlier in this outbreak. Yeah, Blaine, you know, we've all heard about the social distancing and the gatherings, right? Well, in this case, the Cabarrus Health Alliance is investigating outbreaks of coronavirus at what were small gatherings that eventually became, they say, breeding grounds for that virus. In fact, the alliance says the gatherings included a wedding, birthday parties, and an Easter family gathering. The number of people at each of those gatherings was below 10, lower than those guidelines we've all heard about. But they were big enough to create several outbreaks and at least 18 positive cases of coronavirus. The investigative team here has identified 35 close contacts associated with those four recent gatherings. Each contact is now under a 14-day quarantine. Investigators will be following up with people who attended those birthday parties, and the Health Alliance says their investigators are finding, in fact, that more people are relaxing, going to parties and gatherings like that when it's probably not a good idea. So this is a cautionary tale, certainly here in Cabarrus County, but I suspect it would apply in Mecklenburg County and just about everywhere else. If you're thinking about a small gathering, think twice, because even that could launch the coronavirus into, a num into numbers far bigger than the small gathering you've planned. Now, we're going to be talking with the new director here of the Cabarrus Health Alliance shortly about what she thinks is going on here and where their investigation might lead them. Blank. Mark, I'm going to take it from here. You know, certainly a wake up call for families, especially because these are small, tight knit gatherings with close family members. We look forward to following up. Thank you so much. And as of this morning, Cabarrus County has 201 cases of COVID-19 and three deaths. Mecklenburg County continues to have the most cases across North Carolina with more than 1100 and across the state. There are almost 400 new cases from just this time yesterday. Now a total of more than 5,800, and there are also 21 more deaths, making for a total of 152. But we also want you to see this, okay? Those 5,800 positive cases, they are really just a fraction of the nearly 73,000 people who have been tested. And out of all of those positive cases, 429 are in the hospital, and that is down from yesterday. In South Carolina, there are now more than 3,900 cases statewide, and that includes 149 in York County. Sadly, 109 people have now died. We are also getting a new look at how many people in North Carolina are without jobs. This morning, the state announced more than 217,000 people were out of work last month. It's an increase of 35,000 workers from February. It still doesn't tell the whole story because the numbers are based on jobless claims up to March 15th before the state's stay at home order went into effect. The unemployment rate was 4.4% up almost a full percentage point from February. There's some good news for people filing for unemployment. North Carolina says it plans to have more than three times its original staffing in place next week to help you make sure your claims go through. The Department of Unemployment Security says uh, they plan to have more than 1,600 people working by the end of the next week. And if you're not eligible for regular unemployment insurance, DES thinks it will have online filing ready by next Saturday for pandemic unemployment assistance. And some people in nursing homes across North Carolina, they are now living in the middle of these outbreaks. And many of us don't even realize a loved one is staying in one that has positive cases, at least not in Mecklenburg County. Reporter Anthony Costura tells us health officials aren't saying where these outbreaks are happening. Mecklenburg County says it is a privacy issue, and it's up to each nursing home to decide who to tell about the case and when. And we have learned that some families are finding out the hard way. The state says more than 40 nursing and rest homes have at least two or more positive cases across North Carolina. Five of those are in Mecklenburg County, including the social at Cotswold, which has 15 residents and one staffer who've tested positive. It also includes autumn care in Cornelius. One woman told us she didn't know about the cases until she dropped off items for her mother. And now a week later, her mom tested positive. I think that it should be that people should know. I mean, if you're going to put your, your, your family member in a facility, you need to know that there's people infected in there. 
Health Director Gibby Harris says the county has been working with these places to restrict visitation and also limit access so they don't pose a threat. But the county is refusing to identify the locations of outbreaks in nursing homes and assisted living facilities for privacy issues. If we released um, an outbreak, we're releasing the address of individuals, and that's not typically what we do in public health unless there is a public health need to do that. Legally, Mecklenburg County does not have to disclose that information, but it's also not illegal if they do. Several surrounding counties already are doing so, including Rowan, Cabarrus, and Union Counties. Back to you. And nursing homes have become a vulnerable target for the pandemic nationwide. Most facilities have had strict visitor rules for weeks, but the virus has still made its way in. And one tragic example is in New Jersey, where police found 17 people who died in one of the state's largest nursing homes. They say that that facility was understaffed and overwhelmed. In Boston, there's a home with 125 cases and 27 who died there. Anchor Allison Lotta spoke with Ted Daniel. He's an investigative reporter for our sister station in Boston, and he's been looking into this problem extensively, and he ran into some of the same issues that we are now. In the initial phases, you know, we were getting some of our information from the families who were emailing us and say, hey, are you aware of this problem in this nursing home? Since then, the state is here has done a pretty good job of creating a database where you can find out where the problems exist. They list the nursing homes and they will tell you how many COVID positive residents, how many COVID positive staff, and the number of fatalities that have um, taken place there. And he says the National Guard is in Massachusetts going out and uh, doing the tests at those long-term care facilities. The governor also set aside money for workers in those facilities to get hazard pay. And as many worry about their loved ones who live in these homes, we are not forgetting about the people who take care of them. Jasmine Horton works for a skilled nursing center where they haven't had a case, but she says she feels for those who have had cases because she knows what it's like to lose a patient. You can never prepare yourself for um, heartbreaking for sure. And life changing. I feel like it's something you'll never forget. And sometimes the seniors in these care centers are all alone. And Horton says it is always tough when her patients don't get visitors, which we all know is a huge challenge right now. And right now, a lot of parents are uneasy about their child's school situation, especially as spring break now comes to a close. The state board overseeing our schools in North Carolina held an emergency meeting yesterday to talk about funding and the future. And uh, North Carolina schools could get over $450 million from the federal government. The details still being ironed out, but CMS could get at least $32 million of it. And uh, it would help pay for many things, including sanitation, meals, online learning, uh, providing mental health services, and support for low-income students. The state superintendent also revealed leaders had requested $250 million from North Carolina. Now, that request will be discussed at a later meeting, and we are asking what that money would go toward. And United Airlines is now preparing to lay off employees because of their financial issues all caused by the pandemic. The airline is cutting its May and June schedules by 90 percent. A letter from the CEO to employees yesterday said travel demand is essentially zero. And the company is planning for a smaller workforce starting as early as October 1st. Now, the airline can't cut workers until then as part of the federal assistance package. In the middle of this, locally, there are some businesses hiring. Uh, Walgreens is hiring several hundred employees across the Charlotte area. Anchor Damani Lewis spoke with their director of talent acquisition. He says that some people are getting, uh, getting hired and working the same day. The application process through Walgreens is really a very simple one. Um, and it's even easier if you're interested in a temporary job. What you'll want to do is go to jobs.walgreens.com and enter your zip code to find all of the most interesting and applicable jobs for you. And then once you find a job you're interested in and apply in the sense of a temporary job, uh, it's incredibly quick and shortened. And in fact, we've had people apply in the morning and actually be able to work their first shift at Walgreens later that same afternoon. And Walgreens has full part-time and temporary positions available. And just in time for the weekend, right now we're giving you a live look from Chopper 9 Sky Zoom. This is right over the Buster Boyd Bridge at Lake Wiley, and it is where 
the boat ramps are now open. It's a gorgeous day out there, and it's certainly a you know, welcome relief for folks who have been stuck inside during the quarantine and during all the changes. But don't expect to do everything that you were able to do before the stay at home orders went into effect. Yeah, we have South Carolina Bureau reporter Greg Suskin live with uh, what you can and cannot do. And Greg, uh, my family, we put our boat in there uh, where you're standing, and it gets crowded there. Yeah, it sure does. We've seen a lot more boaters coming in today. It's a it's a beautiful breezy afternoon here in Lake Wiley and you, this is about as close you've been able to get to the water since March 30th when the governor shut down these boat ramps. We've seen people out here today boating, fishing, bringing their dogs out here, anything really just to be able to get outside. Now let's show you some video. We were at the Allison Creek boat landing earlier when sheriff's deputies were opening that back up, taking that caution tape down. Though we did notice there were already some trucks and trailers there. People had taken down part of that tape already and had gone in the water a little bit earlier. This was more about being open by noon than it was actually actually at noon, but there are still some restrictions out here. A lot of restrictions. Uh, health officials want to make sure there are only two people on a boat at a time, unless those people are members of your own family who live in your household, then there can be more. They're trying to keep people, of course, from congregating together. That's at boat landings or sandbars or islands or riverbanks, places like that. And of course, the beaches here in South Carolina are not yet open, though there is a growing effort now along the Grand Strand to try to get the governor to go ahead and reopen the beaches. That is not happened yet. Of course, the key point here is still practicing social distancing. That's what the governor felt like could be done if they went ahead and reopened a lot of this boat access. I'm told that here in this area, of course, Lake Wiley, you're going to have the York County Sheriff's Office and DNR officers as well patrolling to make sure people follow those guidelines. Back to you. All right, and we're certainly hoping they do because it is nice to be able to get a little bit of a break outside. Thanks.